How's it going, guys? Electron Man. I believe I have everything together now to uh, put this uh, signal uh, tracer together now. Um, of course, here's the kit I put together. Uh, we already had a video on that. And uh, I found this little old inter intercom speaker, uh, which I think is going to be perfect case for me to build a, to put my uh, signal generator in. I'm going to put a couple BNCs on it for connections. There's my uh, battery terminal power wires that I needed. Uh, got me a couple of switches here. I'm gonna, got me an LED. So I wanna have a power light on here so I know when it's turned on so I don't waste the battery. And then a couple of switches, like I said, nine volts here. And I'm, I plan on using uh, oscilloscope probes. You can pick a set of these up off of uh, Amazon for like 12 bucks. And uh, I think this will be perfect uh, probes to use for uh, they already got 100x in them so they already have a uh, terminate capacitor in them so they should work really good for what i'm going to use as far as for a signal tracer and uh, like i said they were cheap they were 12 bucks i was looking for uh just maybe making some coax etc but this is coax it's got the bnc connector already connected and it's got a nice little prime on it with it with a ground strap so to me it's a perfect setup but anyway we're going to go ahead and get started uh first thing i'll have to do is i'll Drill some holes, figure out how I'm going to mount this inside of there. And then uh, we'll just start the whole wiring process. And I'll come back as we go through it. I kind of wanted to go through and show you what my parts inventory is. I'll kind of sort this out, figure out how I'm going to mount the speaker, etc. And I got these speakers. Uh, these are Sony 8 ohm speakers. And uh, they got really good sound quality. They're full range. And I picked these up on part of specs. I bought like 10 of them because uh, they have like a closeout bin. And I got them for like $2.50 a piece, I think it was. Uh, and I, I, I found a lot of uses for them. They're shielded so that you can have them next to video equipment. Um, anyway, can't can't beat that for, uh, you might want to check the old Parts Express out once in a while. I do. Sometimes I'll have some real bargains. I thought that was a good bargain. But uh, And then here's some BNC uh, connectors so that I can mount to have uh, my connections. And then, of course, I'll, I'll label it and all that. But anyway, let me... Uh, get a drill, start drilling some holes, start doing some mounting, kind of start figuring out where we're going, and I'll kind of come back and forth as the kit, as I build the uh, the unit, and kind of give you updates. Okay guys, Electron Man, um, we're back with this little kit, um, getting this signal uh, generator tracer uh, completed. I got my little box selected out, I have now uh, drilled all the holes and kind of mounted all the components. As you can see, here's our little uh, K7000 kit over here. And then, uh, of course, I've got it wired. I got this little Sony speaker I talked about earlier, uh, which will mount in the front of this right here. I'll, I'll show you that when I get to it. I just kind of want to, kind of got busy on this and was going to give you more detail, but I mean, I, I can still kind of explain it to you. But you got your input and output here. Your left one's the input, out one, output, which you just follow the diagram that you know which one's the input, output. And as you can see, I've mounted my BNC connectors on top here. And then, of course, I've got the, the hot wire going to the hot, and then the, the ground terminal, which is right there, goes to the ground on the board. I mean, it's all kind of, you know, plug and play, as you'd say. Um, I've got my power switch set up in there, which basically I just interrupt the, uh, the DC power from the battery going in to the circuit board power. It does need to be split. I don't know why they did it that way, but there's uh, two 9 volt inputs, so I just split it off the switch and. Uh, and hooked both 9 volt inputs up. I guess if you wanted to, I could have set it up to where I could turn one input or output on or off. Um, that's probably why they did the, the two terminals, but uh, I think I could just turn down the input and still use the output, etc. Um, I did put a little uh, shielding. I, I'd read where that the, uh, the potentiometers, the, the outside shielding, it's not shielded real good, so I went ahead and used a little uh, aluminum or metal tape and combine them together as well, grounded on the inside to make sure there's not any uh, hum or feedback there. So that should help. I mean, that's my thought. That's how I ended up bridging the two together. I'm um, trying to see if there's anything else in there. Oh, I've got my LED hooked up now. Um, I haven't really tested it yet. I have turned it on to make sure the LED works. And I am getting tone, which is a good sign. So um, we'll, uh, we'll we'll go a little further depth once I get it all bundled up here. But I just kind of, before I start doing the final of uh, mounting the speaker, getting the whole thing back together. Kind of wanted you to see the inside here. And as you see, I just drilled two holes for the pinch meters here and mounted, a, mounted it vertical there. I kind of had to get tricky with it because the way this thing slides in, as you can see, you can't have anything on the sides or top or it'll obstruct uh, putting this P3 
piece on them. So I had to kind of mount everything on top, which was fine anyway. That's the way I wanted it. But uh, it kind of gives you, there's your two BNC connectors to your input output. Got my battery, battery mounted up there. My 9 volt, this with a uh, double sided tape, it should hold fine. Hopefully it's not a power hog because I'm not making this really super easy to get in and out and change a battery. But uh, that's why I put an LED on it too. I don't want to leave it on. But if it becomes that it's a battery hog, I could always add a jack to it and have it to where it plugs into the wall. So there's always that option. Find me a 9 volt power supply and just uh, run it off that. But I kind of like it portable this way with the battery built in. So anyway, there we are there. I um, just wanted to give you an update where we're at on the on the, uh, on the the completion of mounting the kit into a case. We're, we're coming right along. Of course, I'll get it all labeled pretty and get the speaker on, and then we'll come back in and look at it again. Okay, guys, we got her 100% wired up, and uh, we're getting ready to take and uh, slide this module in there. As you can see, my tolerance is retired. And I'm going to slide this in there and get her all back together here. Basically, she should slide right in. I don't catch any wires as I go in there, but should slide right on in there. I'm gonna use two hands for this for sure, so I'll be back when I get her all slid in there. But uh, I think we're about we're we're getting close to a pretty box here. Let me uh, let me get this thing slid together, and this little guy here sneaks on the front, and it's got these little pins that hold it in, and uh, we're getting. In there. How's it going, guys? Well, we got her finished. I kind of went overboard, I think. <laughs> you know, might as well. Uh, I'm going to use it, and it's going to be part of my uh, arsenal of uh, test equipment. I might as well do it right. And uh, as you can see, I have uh, completed it. It's totally portable. You take those two screws out there at the front, slides out so you can change the battery, etc. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it turned out really good. It functions just like it should. Uh, in fact, we'll, <clears throat> we'll kind of go over. Uh, what I'm going to use this for and, and why I built it in the first place. Um, as you know, it's a signal tracer and uh, you have an input and output. Well, we'll start with uh, the output, which basically that means it's going to generate a signal. And uh, let's see here. Let me figure out which probe I've got going where. Okay. So we're going to start with the, the output. And uh, I've, got it, I've got it just hooked up to my oscilloscope now. Uh, but we'll turn it on. By the way, um, check it out. Got a little LED showing you that's powered on. And uh, if you go up here, you see uh, I've just got a flat wave there or a flat uh, beam on the oscilloscope. And then if I turn the injector up, that actually creates my signal. So as you can see, it's nice and linear. And I believe it'll go anywhere from adjustable. It's zero to it's zero to two point five because if you look at the scale there, yeah, that would be zero, would be one, be two, and it goes off the screen there. But yeah, I mean, nice and linear. I mean, it does exactly what it should. And as you can see, I can zero it out. Now, what's nice about this is is uh, what I can use it for is you know I always tell you I'm gonna hook a signal up and trace a signal, what I'll do is, is um, I, I've got another signal generator, but I'll generate a signal, say uh, we'll generate a signal about right there, and uh, which is what, about one, one volt, yeah, it's about one volt, but anyway, I, and then uh, what you can do is, is you can take, you can hook a second probe up here, I just kind of got this for example, but but the idea is, is here is, is, okay, I would take this probe that's out and when I would inject it into whatever piece of component I'm testing and then I, then I have the input. Let me go ahead and plug it in here. And now let me move this back here a little bit so you can kind of get an idea. And now we have the signal tracer. So this is my hot one for my signal tracer. And uh, basically what you can do is now I've got a signal going through it is I can use an audio tone to trace the signal. In fact, you should uh, hear that. See, that's my signal. And actually, I, it, basically the tracer, I could turn the volume up. I'll turn the volume up there. So you can go through there and just, uh, just hit your components and, and, you know, obviously see if, uh, if you got a somewhere that the uh, signal's not passing through and you know cap uh, transistor resistor whatever and um, 
And uh, basically, with that, you're able to um, troubleshoot, you know, equipment faster. Uh, I've always used signal tracing. It's an easy way to uh, to troubleshoot. Um, I I get so tired of uh, as you, you see my bench is set up. I'm always having to uh, look up, you know, hit something, look up, look up. With this, I can uh, I can go through there and uh, go through it a lot faster and and just follow the signal. Actually, let me go ahead and. Uh, set this here I'm gonna turn that down here so you can get a better idea of the tone on it there would took a direct I just got it looped through right now but uh so basically see that's the output you can hear I'm increasing the output of the injector you can go way down this is good for uh, actually uh anytime you need to uh have a signal and as you saw it's a nice pretty sine wave on the oscilloscope and then uh obviously this is just your, this is just your volume here which is plenty loud enough as you can see and uh there you go i'm gonna give you a look around it like I said, it's just running on a 9 volt battery. Uh, two screws in the bottom, and I can replace that. And I put the light on it because uh, I don't want to burn up 9 volt batteries. So hopefully the light will remind me that it's on. Of course, you can zero it out, turn it on, and you're not going to have any sound at all, which is the way it should be. So there's no feedback going on. And uh, as you can see, I actually those are Cobra knobs that I used off an old Cobra radio that I had parted out and cut the shafts down and made her nice and pretty. But uh, there you go. One completed uh, project. Uh, definitely going to have it on my bench for some of my arsenal for troubleshooting. I think this will come in real handy for tube radios and stuff. Um, I won't even inject the signal in it because I can. Um, I need to make another probe. I, I, I need to put a uh, probably like a one or two pickle fare to cap in, uh, in line and use some coax and I can create a uh, touchless uh, probe. So that you can just kind of wand through there and uh, pick up your uh, your eye signals. But uh, anyway, I've been looking to buy one uh, a signal tracer off of you know eBay, and and even these ones are six years old. You're not even guaranteed they work. Probably end up with a project to fix it, and you know, and they've been you know they're just high. Um, they're they're going hundred, two hundred dollars. You know, anything really nice, maybe even up three hundred dollars. And uh, I added this all up and. All in all, I've got about 50 bucks in the whole project. Granted, the uh, the little box I had laying around, it was a scrap, but uh, everything else, including battery, about 50 bucks I got in this. And it's, it's really cool because not only is it a signal tracer, which most of those are only signal tracers, it's also got the signal injector. So it's a dual purpose. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this little uh, series on uh, building a signal tracer and injector, that K7000 kit. I'm pretty proud of it. I think it turned out pretty nice. Anyway, uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you get a chance, uh, subscribe to my channel. And guys, have a great day. This is Electron Man.